morning guys. Well, three the charm. I was trying to do this multiple times here and Facebook Live kept hanging up. So I will wait a little bit here and hope that some of you get on here with me. See some of you popping in. That's awesome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chad. Uh, we've got a good subject today. It is a glorious sunny day here in northern Idaho. I am so excited. We've had nothing but sun, sun, rain, nothing but rain. It's been very miserable. Um, sun here and there, and yesterday we got out for a nice stroll. Good morning, Jill. Okay, let me make sure my volume is muted on this. Okay, how you guys doing this morning? Talk to me. Today's subject is going to be gardening and planting um, what we want to grow. So, how many of you have started your gardens? Um, and and what are you what are you growing so far? Share. Talk to me. We'll wait and see if we get a couple more people on here. And I wanted to touch on some things before we get started here. Um, staying strong but in pain. I yeah, sending prayers your way, Chad. And we'll be in touch with you later. Um, last week I shared our current circumstances. Um, I'm just going to recap on this a little bit because I want to point a couple things out and also um, touch on some things. Our current circumstances are financial. We've uh, the mountain man's been kind of hee-hawing. I've been hee-hawing around, but we haven't really um, been forthright. And you know, being on the internet like this and putting yourself out there, uh, you kind of lose sometimes that personal quality that you have in your family um, because you're so transparent that everybody knows everything. So there's a fine line. You know, we still want to have our family dynamics and still have our privacy. But at the same time, during my illness, after going through my illness, I really, really wish that I had been transparent, fully transparent from the very beginning because I would have taken you guys through an absolutely beyond breathtaking, incredible journey of ups and downs, but incredible blessings. And I think that's why God prompted me last week to share our circumstances with you. And I want to share a little bit more. Um, I am adding a few new things this year. Kiwi, goji berries, and ooh, very nice, Jill, very nice. I had asked uh, about the um, what, what you guys are planting. I would love to pick your brain on that. That's pretty awesome that you can grow those things. Um, of course, in our environment, that wouldn't work. No possibly in a greenhouse. Um, but with our circumstances, um, we, we are down to pennies. We are behind on things. We've had a very rough winter financially. Um, we had a very full schedule for the construction business in December and um, mid-November everything just fell apart. And I want to point out that we have done absolutely everything in our power to change our circumstances. Everything. We are very diverse. God has blessed us in great ways. The mountain man has been selling knives and making knives. I have been working on web designs, including our own. Um, we have put ourselves out there in so many different ways and have been trying to pull things together. Um, our diverseness is what we have really, um, focused on out here because winter months out here in Idaho, especially in our area, are very meek and mild uh, as far as work goes. So you have to be diverse. And like I said, we had a very awesome lineup for December, but everything fell apart and we hadn't gotten anything um, to materialize 
except for within the last month. And, you know, going that long without can really uh, cause struggles. So, I am sharing this with you so that you realize that we aren't just sitting here and we aren't just allowing things to happen around us. We are doing everything we can. We wake up in the morning, our feet hit the floor, and our feet don't come off the floor until we lay flat to go to bed at night. We work. We work hard. And we, are, like I said, are doing everything in our power to change our circumstances. But sometimes I think that our circumstances are presented to us so that we... Um, learn things that we maybe um, slow down and start listening to that small still voice um, which I think is what um, we have been led to do with our Treyer Wilderness Academy I feel that God has been really pushing us in that direction and I'm, I'm grateful because that's where both the mountain man and I feel very comfortable in what we do we educate on our lifestyle we educate on our passions um, and, and it's days away. I'm very excited, but you know, the power of our circumstances, had I not said anything and had I not been transparent, you wouldn't know all this and you wouldn't see us, you know, walking the walk and talking the talk. A full faith walk is, um, an incredible journey. It's a journey where you know you've done everything in your power to alter the circumstances. You have decided that you are no longer going to worry and sit and waste your time worrying about the outcome, about the daily struggles. Um, You've become strong enough to push the enemy aside who is trying to instill worry, instill discouragement, instill so many negative things in you while you're going through this journey that you're missing the positive of the journey. And, and that is that you are trusting, and I mean truly and fully trusting the outcome, regardless if it's good or bad. And, and just letting go. Yes, exactly. Jill just said, letting go and letting God. Amen. That is what it's about. But so many of us start to let go. We take our fingers off. We give it to, we say we give it to God, but then we start pulling it back in and, and we try to control it again. Or we worry. And you know what? You just got to let it go. There is such a freedom in getting to this place where you just let it go. And trust me, I did not share things last week f to get handouts. I did not share things last week for you to feel sorry for us. I would love your prayers. So would the mountain man. Trust me, prayers are one of the best tools and not everybody believes that, but there is such a power in prayer. And to be able to see things unfold in a very natural way, knowing that it's, a, it's definitely something bigger and greater in control of this situation than you could ever imagine. And and for non-believers, this is sometimes what you need to see to understand. I'm going to share a story with you. Then this is some of the reasons I wish that you were on our journey with us through my illness and that I had been more transparent from the very beginning. I knew God wanted me to share things. I just didn't know timing wise when. Um, it was a very personal nature so I didn't jump on it and that's again why I'm sharing this today because God nudged me last week. I was pushed and I knew I was being pushed and I just grabbed the bull by the horns. Patty says, absolutely, faith gives us so much, especially in tough and difficult times. It does. It builds us. It grows us. And I say, without a test, there's no testimony. And the next step to that is, if you have a test and you have a testimony and you don't share it, you're putting that basket over your light. You're burying your light. You're burying what you could share that could help other people grow. You also just deterred the growth you just had because you didn't utilize it the way you were meant to utilize it. So when you're going through this stuff, guys, you know, there is definitely a reason for transparency. And let me share this with you. I think you'll, you'll totally understand where I'm headed with this. 
down in Georgia. We were down there for almost three quarters of a month for my surgery in 2016. I had my surgery. I started having some complications with how I was healing and um, that there was ev ev it was evident that I needed um, to do more. And uh, my surgeon, my doctor, recommended um, other prescriptions. Now, understand, we got there on faith. We, it, it was total faith. I believe that God, I know that God diagnosed me because the doctors couldn't. And it was through his pushing me to purchase things that it became very evident what was wrong with me. In addition to that, he sat me up at 1.20 in the morning, straight up in bed, and I just started having all these ideas flowing through my head, and I started searching, and I started searching, and all the different things I was searching led me to my surgeon. So I knew where I needed to go, and I, I stirred the pot. I made many people close to us disturbed because um, I wouldn't look for somebody local. I knew that I needed to go to Georgia. This woman was top surgeon in, in my illness. She also was the only one in the country who had a protocol in place for um, detoxing and healing from all the garbage in my system. I just knew. So I get down there. We have my surgery. It was a success, but I needed to get further prescriptions. Now, I got down there on faith in that my dear friend Vicki Lynn Haycraft from realfoodliving.com, you've possibly seen her on here with me, she joins me periodically, she started a fundraiser for us. The fundraiser afforded us to get our airline tickets and um, have money for a rental car and some food, and that's it. Um, a dear friend of mine paid for our hotel room the entire time we were there. I mean, God just kept lining it up. It was just incredible. But while we were down there, all we had left was money for the rental car and our baggage, and that was it. Um, my family was coming to visit. Uh, the mountain man's family was coming to visit. They were bringing us food, which was such a tremendous blessing. So we had $300 in our checking account. That's all we had left, guys. And um, the prescription, I went to the counter, and the nice man, the pharmacist behind the counter said it would be 790 some dollars to fill my prescription, okay? So I was like perplexed. I was like, oh man, how are we going to do this, you know? And the mountain man comes out of the bathroom, he grabs my shoulders, and he looks at me and he says, why are you stopping now? And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, you got here fully on faith. So what are you doing? Go give him the prescription. Okay, so I gave him the prescription. We walk away, we go to an empty aisle, and we prayed. We got a couple food items for the night because we needed some things to eat and to drink. So we went back to the counter, gave him those things. He rang us up. He says, I gave you a discount. Okay. He says to me, your balance for today is $271. I'm like, you got all the food and everything else here on the counter? Yeah. I stood there and bawled like a baby. Tell me that was not God. Tell me that was not a God thing. Tell me that the mountain man didn't need to shake me instead of grab my shoulders. When you're living on faith, you got to just keep going. And you got to trust. I mean deeply, truly trust. So that situation there is the prerequisite for this situation here. I'm not swaying. I'm not distrusting. I'm not going back and questioning what's happening here. This is a God thing, and we are living on faith. And I'm going to share with you what happened after last week's podcast or Facebook Live, okay? We didn't have money for our mortgage. And... We didn't have money for anything. Had one of our trucks run low on fuel, we would have been sitting and walking, okay? So, and you might have heard us mentioning our backhoe. Our backhoe's been down for over two years. Uh, we finally figured out what was wrong with it, uh, but we couldn't find the part. Over the last year, we couldn't find the part. Over the year before that, we figured out what was going on. Absolutely, Chad, hold your hands up and worship him, he says. And you know it. It's just amazing. And I can't sit here and not share this with you guys. So, okay, so listen to this. We go midway through the week last week, and we were gifted 
enough money to cover our mortgage. All right. It wasn't expected. It wasn't asked for. It just happened. The other thing that happened is um, a dear friend of ours knew our circumstances with the backhoe, and he he offered to gift us money towards the part. And it, it's just because you know, and not knowing our circumstances, not knowing where we're at, what's going on. It's just amazing. Now you need to know that this backhoe plays a big role in what we do here on our homestead. It also plays a role on taking care of some things before we can sell our property. I am trusting and believing God that when this Treyer Wilderness Academy opens up, we are going to become philanthropists, guys, and we are going to be able to take care of all of our needs. God is going to bless us with all the money we need for our obligations, for our goals, and to still be generous with to others. That is a tremendous thing, and I feel that. I feel that in my heart. I feel that in my gut. I know that God is going to bless us greatly through this academy. And, and in turn, we are going to be able to bless others. And to me, that is just such an amazing thing. I keep feeling that um, God is going to utilize our skills um, on mission trips upcoming. And I am so excited because I've always wanted to do that. So there's a lot of things transpiring here, guys. And um, I wanted to share that with you this morning. The other thing that I feel is really cool is today's subject just kind of meshes with what we're talking about. So... Um, you know, if you're in a hard spot, if you are um, going through struggles, um, if you've gone through struggles and you have a testimony to share, don't sit on it. You have opportunities around you to share that testimony with people. You may not, you know, choose to do it in the mass way that we are. Um, this is this is not always easy. You know, being this transparent to the whole world um, is can be a nerving feeling. But at the same time, last week sharing that with you, I can't tell you how that felt. That was just amazing. And. As Chad said, I owe this all to God. I owe this all to God. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to chase away the non-believers. I want you here. I, I, walk with me through this. And um, just gain from my knowledge, gain from what I'm sharing with you, and just, you know, humor me, okay? You know, each week after I do a Facebook Live, I watch my numbers drop. And that's okay. In other places, my numbers are growing. And my numbers don't matter to me. The only thing that matters to me is that I'm reaching people. And maybe reaching the right people. I don't want to lose anybody because I want to I want to pull everybody into this. It's just I am so proud and so excited out loud. So, But I know I'm talking the right stuff. I know I'm sharing with you what I'm being led to share. And I know that things are being put in front of me for a reason. So guys, don't. Don't tremble and quake in your rough spots. If you've done everything in your power to alter your rough spot, or there's nothing you can do to change your rough spot, walk through it. Walk through it boldly and trust the outcome, whether good or bad. Because even if this turns out to be a bad outcome for us, I know there will be a purpose in it. And, and that is when you finally get to that point in your life where you are willing to walk in faith regardless of what goes on. And it's, it's an amazing feeling. And I want you to feel that feeling, you know, when you keep gripping it back and pulling it back in out of fear and out of worry and out of the enemy prompting, you're, you're missing that wholehearted, deep feeling that comes with this. Okay, so enough of that. I think you get my point that that is why I'm reaching my chair over here. Sorry. I've got my feet on a yoga ball. I'm trying to change my posture and sit taller and, and correct my body. Um, also doing some great workouts. Um, when I'm done here, I'm going to be doing a workout and then hitting the trail to do a stroll. I have to rename it because I can no longer say the four-letter word that starts with a W, nor can I spell it because my dogs are smart. And they would start terrorizing my house right now if they heard me saying that word. So, you can train your animals. Um, so, uh, how many of you are still taking care of yourselves? 
We started out living with intention this year. We started out being sure that we were taking good care of ourselves. Are you taking time, even if it's 5, 10, 15 minutes out of your day, to be good to yourself, to get a workout in, to release your body of stress? Are you? Ha, ha, ha. Any of you? Please do, because it makes such a tremendous difference. It really, really does. And I'm going to share my workout with you later. Not today, but later in time. Okay, so today, gardening. Plant what you want to grow. So, um, Jill shared what she's planting. That's really awesome. Um, I would love to be able to grow pineapples and avocados. Um, so, I don't know that I can, but I'm going to try. Uh, we d definitely need a greenhouse to grow some of these tropical things. And the goji berries, Jill, are awesome. Oh, those are such a good medicinal berry. I love them. Um, so thank you for sharing that. What else are you guys growing? Um, what, do you, what do you got in your garden? Now, some people um, pull away from gardening because it's a lot of work. And honestly, it is a lot of work, but I was given a whole new perspective while I was listening to my pastor's Easter sermon. And it just touched me in such a big way and enlightened me in such a huge way. So, you know, in gardening, you know, you're pruning, you're weeding, you know, you're uh, maybe moving your plants because they're growing too close to others. Um, got a lot of work involved. The weeding and the pruning um, can be tough, but it helps your plants grow, right? It helps you produce. So this kind of goes hand in hand with life, doesn't it? What do you want to produce in life? What do you want to grow? Okay. Um, when I'm out in my garden, previously when I would, I plant in my garden, I have four um, rows going uh, vertically and one growing uh, horizontally. I'm just talking how they're placed on the ground, landscape, and and uh, the one in the back that is going in a landscape fashion compared to the other raised beds is my herbal garden. It is right next to my bees, and I had uh, cilantro growing in there, and sage, and spearmint tea, which is a strain of spearmint tea like no other I've ever found. It's something that we've transplanted and brought back from Pennsylvania, and it is just amazing. And um, I also had stevia growing. So I would go and I would grab a leaf of sage, and I would grab a leaf of cilantro, and I would grab a leaf from the stevia, and I would grab a leaf from my spearmint plant, and I would put them in my mouth, and I would chew them as I go. And it was like I was chewing on the best tea in the world. Those fresh herbs are so good for you and they just, and I'd be out in my garden, I'd be barefooted and it was just such a healing feeling for me and just being out there, I don't know, it's like it just takes you away when you're in your garden. If you are gardeners, you'll understand, um, especially when you take away that hurried need. When I got out to my garden, it was like time slowed down. I, I, have an outdoor um, unit for our Wi-Fi uh, that was mainly so that our guests in the cabin could have Wi-Fi down there. So um, the ones that were living with us and um, it has expanded my reach. So when I'm in the garden, I can be listening to my music and or podcasts, but I would listen to my music out there and just kind of trans transform while I was out there. So it's a great thing. And when we moved out here into the Idaho wilderness, our land was wild and overgrown and untouched for so long. So we had to start kind of reclaiming it and getting rid of the scrub oaks and the weeds and creating a place to build our home. So as we were reclaiming a place in the wilderness, I think that God does the same thing in us, and our, our, the question I have is, while you're out there gardening, are you allowing yourself that freedom and that time? Are you enjoying it? Are you stepping back? And if you don't garden, I encourage you to do so, even if it's in a, a big pot on your back porch. It's, it's just um, it's transformational, and my question to you is, are you letting God garden in you. 
Are you letting him reclaim from that wilderness? Uh, just a question, just a thought. You know, uh, we're so quick to pull out and pull back and pull away from all the things that are good in our life. And I um, want to encourage you to think about that when you're gardening. Um, in the sermon, John 20, 15, it says, Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus says to her as he's standing next to her. And, and who are you looking for, he says. And she thought he was the gardener. And she says, Sir, if you've taken him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will go and get him. This is after Jesus' Jesus's resurrection in the tomb. And she thought he was the gardener. And the pastor said, you know, is it coincidence that there's a, a, a verse in there about him being the gardener? And it just totally put a smile on my face because he is that. He is our gardener. He is trying to weed out the garbage. He's trying to prune us so that we grow. And he's trying to um, turn us into that mature, grown, and ripened piece of fruit or vegetable, you know? I mean, he is working in us the same as we work in our gardens. So. To me, that was just such an awesome analogy, and when I am in my garden from now on, I will have such an even deeper um, feeling and thought to being in my garden, because, you know, I think that God uses every circumstance in our life to have the opportunity to nurture us and to work in us. So, you know, he might be trying to produce joy, love, kindness, goodness, humbleness, selflessness, all those things in us through our different walks. And sometimes he's also trying to nurture us into a disciple, maybe, into um, a craftsman of sorts, that we have the opportunity to reach out to others and to help others. And I really feel that that is what he's doing in my family and nurturing us. You know, when we moved here, our website started out as a means to keep in touch with our family. We didn't have a constant internet connection. We didn't have a good phone. I mean, we had to stand between two upright trees on the running board of the truck with an arm in the air. I mean, we were the epitome of the Verizon commercials, you know, and we had 15 minutes to make a call because it was bouncing off repeaters on the mountain that were that are used by the loggers. So it has a 15 minute time lapse on your phone calls. And once that 15 minutes is up, it beeps and you're done. So imagine trying to make tech support calls. That was quite a challenge. Anyway, um, Robin Armstrong changed. This is becoming more like God and less like me. Amen. Amen. Awesome, Robin. Thanks for joining me. Um, and, and thanks for sharing that. That is, that is so true, is that we, uh, I'm trying to think where it's worded in, in the Bible. I think it is in, I think it's in John, where it's less of me and more of him when he was baptizing. And, um, and that, and, and that's what needs to happen. And it's, it's an amazing feeling, really, when you get to this point um, and when you start to fully understand. I mean, I've read my Bible my whole life, but I didn't get it. And I listened to Todd White, and, and uh, you know, he couldn't read a book. He, he couldn't read, but the first book he read was the Bible. And I don't know. I just challenge you in your walk, guys. I challenge you. I challenge you to pick up your cross and and follow and 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 join me on this journey. Watch what transpires. Watch what happens. Watch where we go. Watch who we help. Watch how. I just, you know, our our website, like I started saying, was meant to feed our family. My mother thought I was going to get eaten by wolves and mountain lions, and the potential was there. But when you're on an adventure like we were, who cares? You know, come our way. We'll we'll fight you off. It was worth it was worth the the it was just worth it. Um living in that wall tent was the absolute best time of my life. It was the most simple and most pure time of my life. I would do it again in a heartbeat. And I hope to. 
and you know our website started to get seen by other people we started videoing on YouTube and then we started getting a reach and you know reaching people in the UK and Australia and Guam even and it's just been it's been amazing it's been amazing to see the transformation of something that was started with no intent in mind and it's awesome to watch how God uses us uses what we're doing um, I just love it it's amazing and I want you to watch I want you to follow and and just be a part of this and you know sometimes when we're in that garden we just need to let it grow right you know you, you've weeded and weeded and you can't weed anymore it's time to let this stuff grow and watch it mature and see what happens with it right well sometimes when we don't hear that voice and we don't feel the direction that we need he's he's maturing us he's working in us he's growing us and I think as we continue to go through the journeys we were never promised a perfect life um, we were we were pro promised an everlasting life but we weren't promised you know a life full of joy and happiness without the hiccups and without the struggles and truly guys it's all how you view the struggles you know um, you could you could just be torn apart and 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 sad and 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 just in turmoil over your struggles or you could be like yay gave me another one and that's where I'm at I'm ready for it you know there's there has been constant struggles and I told you this story before when we were going through you know building our homestead Oh my gosh, you know, we work twice, not that I'm saying other people don't work, but we were working double time. We were working that of three people each day individually, you know, we were just busting butt. And when you work like that and you're doing that much volume and just pushing, sure things are going to break. And I'd have to say that at least two or three times more things are going to break because we're pushing that hard. And that's exactly what was happening. And, you know, the mountain man would just get, oh, furious and, and just distraught. And I, I, I just laugh and, you know, he was ready to strangle me, but he finally got to where I was, you know, he came in one day and he was just ready to drop on his knees. He couldn't do it anymore. He, he had enough, you know, so much was breaking, so much was going wrong. And I just laughed and he gave me the hairy eyeball. I said, what are you going to do? What can we do at this point? We've done everything in our power to change the circumstances of the situation and we can't. So we need to find a way to push through it. And, and my, my coping mechanism, sadly, is laughter and, and happiness and just pushing through and, and finding a solution and fixing what we can and you know and he's finally gotten there and it's just it's perspective I tell you that every week it's perspective Chad says when you can't hear his voice you trust his heart awesome I love that Chad I'm gonna write that one down that's a good one that's a Chad Vandal quote I'm gonna make a graphic of that baby and put your name on it thank you you know it's it's how we look at it and same with Robin's and and Jill's thoughts today those are tremendous thoughts that we need to hang on to in the midst of our battles, in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our journeys, in the midst of our devastation. Um, I'm reading a neat book. I always like sharing the books that I'm reading with you. It's Tuesdays with Maury. I will share a link with that. I just started it, but it's it's one of those you can't put down, but I need to rest because I've been pushing so hard during the day, so I forced myself to put it down last night. But um, it's a book about a man who is... Um, dying from ALS but is choosing to be bigger than it and to use it as a teaching tool and um, really neat really neat book so um, another thing for you guys to check out I'll put it in the description later and there's um, links in the description I did put the link to the Easter sermon so that you can listen to the whole thing I really encourage you to listen to it it's amazing I do that kind of stuff when I'm doing my dishes when I'm making dinner at night um, I try to listen to something encouraging every day even if I'm you know I'm not discouraged but it's something I need I, I love that encouragement I love gaining from other people I, I love nurturing my soul so I encourage you guys to do that kind of stuff there's also links in the description for some of my favorite gardening um, tools uh, seeds for generations um, 
Jason is a great friend of mine. Um, he is a brother in Christ and his family does amazing things. You may be familiar with him also because of his Beyond Off Grid venture. We'll add a link to that too later. Um, but the, the family all together works on the seed business and they are heirloom seeds and um, I highly encourage you to check them out. Also, the Gardening Notebook, which is another dear friend of mine, Angie, um, who wrote the Gardening Notebook, which is a reprintable ebook that you can use every year, uh, keeping track of your gardening venture. Um, maybe you can even write in there some of the verses that come to mind when you're out there, and some of the things um, I would, I would, I'm going to start writing in there now that I've totally got a different view of gardening. Um, Right in there, some of the uh, things of encouragement that go through your mind while you're out there gardening. Also, um, the Skill of the Month membership at the Treyer Wilderness Academy dot com will be live within the next couple days. I am going to do my workout, get out for a stroll, and then I'm recording the rest of the day and putting videos together to fine tune and finish what we've got to get out there. So it is close, it is ready, and I'm excited. There will be a membership area, so. Um, the uh, Skill of the Month membership will include the Indoor Seed Starting course. Uh, there will also um, be a skill each month that is added to that membership. So you will be nurtured every month with uh, skills that I feel and that we feel you need to have um, for your growth in homesteading, in preparedness, in a self-reliant life. There will also be free Bible studies available in, as part of your membership. There will also be courses available that you can purchase independently if you are not into or unable to afford the membership, will, which will be priced at a great introductory price. Um, but the Mountain Man will have his trapping class. He will have his blacksmithing class. I will have a knitting class. So maybe some of you guys aren't into knitting, but I think it's a great skill is to know how to knit socks. So when you're out in the wilderness in your little cabin growing old, you can still mend, knit, and create socks. <laughs> anyway, um, so go to TreyerWildernessAcademy.com, sign up for our waiting list if you haven't. Um, that way you will be the first to know when the doors are opened. And guys, it will be momentarily. I am like so excited. I'm so stoked. I'm tired, but it's so worth it. This is just awesome. And it's coming together so nicely. God just keeps transplanting information and ideas into my head to help it materialize. So... So, what are your thoughts today, guys? What did you think? Are you allowing God to work in your garden? Are you allowing Him to nurture you? Or are you hanging on to fear and worry, which are wasted time? And in your garden, your real garden, your fruit garden, your vegetable garden, I hope that you are getting out and doing something of some sort and watching something grow. It's amazing. I've had to give up my garden for the last two years and I'm so anxious to get out there and start. Um, the pastor made reference that he and his wife were planting tulips and some of the one of the congregation had started their garden and then he laughed about us on the other side of the valley who still have a foot of snow in places, which we do. My backyard still has has snow in it but my garden does not so I will be nurturing that and getting that ready and getting some seeds out there soon so guys okay Chad said I signed up a long time ago and we are going to get a confirmation when it goes live you will absolutely you will probably get a heads up bef way before it goes live and get you guys geared up and ready to go and yes, I am just, I'm so excited and thank you for signing up, Chad. Um, I just think it'll be a great um, opportunity. Uh, we will have some free classes available, um, one on autism to help uh, parents, grandparents, even autistic people, um, individuals, children to learn from Austin. Uh, we will be doing a Q&A, Austin and I, on autism. So if you have questions that you would like to ask of him, maybe how, how certain things felt um, you know what it was like to do certain things what is it like to have autism whatever questions you may have um, and I'm asking parents grandparents and individuals with autism to feel free to ask Austin questions because we would like to be able to help as many people as possible to overcome and um, 
just be a light to others. So feel free to leave those in the comments today. Um, and I also had a post out on Facebook that I was asking those questions. So feel free. Um, if you know people with autism, get them involved. We would love to be able to um, do that live and um, get that information out to everybody and answer questions. So anyway, I've taken up enough of your time today. Um, I hope you can feel the energy and feel the excitement and feel the faith growing in us. Um, the guys have been off working, um, doing different things. The mountain man is doing some construction work. The mountain boy is working on some of his uh, mechanical things and also helping us. If anyone needs prayers, please PM Chad through Facebook. Um, he is one of my biggest prayer warriors. Um, you don't have to, as he put, you don't have to give the details. Guys, when you need prayer and they're personal, you can ask for prayer and not ask for the details or share the details. You know, God knows your circumstances and we would, and we don't need to know them. Um, so he's, he's an amazing prayer warrior. So don't hesitate to reach out to him. You can also private message me in our, on our Facebook page or email us anytime at survive at treyerwilderness.com. Guys, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me today. If you're watching this after the fact, join in, leave comments. I do follow up and I do comment back and I, and I love to be able to chat with you guys. And thank you for all of you for joining me. I'm just going to say a quick prayer. Dear Jesus, just wrap your arms around our audience. Uh, help those that are struggling. Help those that are dealing with uh, health issues. Strengthen them. Be with them and just love on them. Uh, encourage their faith walk and strengthen their faith. Help them to have the courage to let go and to trust. And Lord, just thank you for blessing us with them. Thank you for all you do. Just bless everyone with an amazing week and uh, Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Guys, have a great week. See you next Wednesday. And you'll probably see me before because when the Academy goes live, I'm going to be doing one of these and doing a video. So take care and thanks for joining me. God bless.